we're talking about a really serious thing today. We're talking about women's health issues, PMS, menopause, breast cancer, all things that we have to really be paying more and more attention to. And joining us is our good friend. I'm really intrigued to talk about this today because I was reading through some of the information that you sent and I was surprised at some of the facts you gave us about PMS because I think you're right. Women do not have to experience PMS. Uh, as a matter of fact, research shows that a woman's hormonal cycle is a very good representation of her overall health. So what starts to happen when people's health starts to change, remember that health wellness spectrum, health being over here, disease over here, right. Right. and the changes occurring slowly and steadily, what initially happens is we see changes at PMS time. So, you know, maybe somebody gets gets a little bit headachy or a little bit irritable and it starts premenstrually and if something isn't done to help improve that which we're going to talk about which is very easy to do then we could start progressing and the symptoms could carry on to more days of the month. Are there, exactly. there long-term ramifications? Definitely because the reason why I grouped all these health conditions together is because they're all about hormones and in the media we're hearing all kinds of things about plastics and how they have a phytoestrogen property and then we think estrogen, well, what's that related to? Mm -hmm. And we have to remember that breast cancer, when I first started practicing in 1991, breast cancer statistics were 1 in 11. And now the World Health Organization has moved it up to 1 in 6. What we want to uh, focus on is the fact that elevated amounts of estrogen that we might be exposed through, through plastics, through herbicides, pesticides, food sources, elevate estrogen in our body and that might put us at increased risk of breast cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, etc. So, okay, yes. so, so this is all connected then? Yes. Yeah. Okay, now, so let's talk about, I mean, most of us know what the symptoms are of PMS. Yes. I mean, you mentioned a couple already, headachy, yes. breast tenderness. Uh, elevated amounts of estrogen. So again, with PMS, there's different reasons why PMS occurs. So depending on what reason would be where we would tailor your program a little bit. Okay. But in general, you want to keep in mind that when the body's overloaded with food sensitivities, that the body's not breaking down, that increases the stress to the liver and the liver conjugates and breaks down your hormones. So if you have too much estrogen in your system, your liver's the organ that breaks it down. And if it's overloaded, it just can't do its job effectively. Mm -hmm. So one, remove food sensitivities. Two, take a look at doing detoxifications, which we right. always talk about. Yes, yeah. And then three, there's certain simple things that you can do. So sure. how, would, how would a woman figure out what food sensitivities she has. Great. Um, there's the old-fashioned way, which is trial and error, which mm -hmm. is, I think this food causes a problem. I'm going to take it out and then reintroduce it and see what mm -hmm. happens. Okay. That it takes, takes forever, though. It takes a long <laughs> yeah. time. In our clinic, we use something called the Vega Test System, which is where we use acupuncture allergy test points on the corner of each nail bed, and we can determine what is the resistivity to a person's reaction to foods. So if you react well, the current's going to flow through very readily, you're going to not see any resistance. If a person is sensitive, you're going to see a drop in reading and there's going to be a change there. The other method is doing uh, blood work. You can right. also test for food sensitivities doing blood work. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's different mechanisms that you can use. Some women come in and we find their food sensitivities and they eliminate one or two things. It might be as simple as, as sugar, or it might be as simple as caffeine, mm -hmm. or uh, tomatoes. I've had really? people who've had tomatoes and they get headaches just premenstrually. So you know you eliminate that and it's possible that your symptoms could get 100% better. Let's talk then about good foods and good supplements supplements that can help sure. you through this period. Yes. As TL was asking, what can a person do? Well, there's some really simple things, and one of the most common would be a supplement called Evening Primrose Oil. Mm -hmm. It's available in liquid form or capsule form. Its active ingredient is something called gamma linoleic acid. GLA. I like the GLA. <laughs> <laughs> and essentially what it does is it helps to reduce uh, excess arachidonic acid, which promotes inflammation. Uh, so it's very effective, especially if a person was to begin taking it mid-cycle and take it right into the menstrual period. Okay, so it's yeah. not something you'd have to take every single day, just when you start to Yes, if you've experience. got mild PMS, it would just be mid-cycle to your period. Okay. If you've got extreme, you might want to consider taking it all month. Or we might want to split the oils. You might want to take flax oil in the first half of the
the cycle in evening primrose in the second. Okay. Again, depending on a person's unique situation. When we start talking about PMS, we want to remember that cramps are related to muscular contraction and calcium is involved in relaxing smooth muscle. So not only does it help reduce cramps, but it also helps to uh, improve sleep. Oh. So we've got a couple different kinds here. When people look for calcium, it's really important to know that calcium is always bound to something else. Okay. So you got to know calcium carbonate, calcium citrate, what is it together mm -hmm. with? And ca calcium carbonate is very high in quantity, but the body doesn't break it down very much. So if, uh, if a person is younger, calcium carbonate might be okay. As we get older, we reduce the hydrochloric acid, so we need something easier to break down like a citrate. Or a combination, which Oprah endorses, <laughs> osteoprime. And this one has a combination of calcium in a citrate, carbonate, amino acid chelate form. So it's a good, well rounded kind of formula. So, would you recommend this one to yes. go with a combination? Yeah. And then, yeah. you, if you're unsure of which one you need, you're pretty much guaranteed exactly. you're all right. Okay. Exactly. I, I like to highlight foods because, it, as, as important as these supplements are, again, we got to go back to our foods. So, a great breakfast, and um, one of the foods I'd like to highlight is, is simply almonds because they're really, really high in antioxidants, they're really high in calcium. Uh, it's actually the highest non-vegetarian source of calcium. On then to menopause. Yes. Now yes. this, as I understand it, happens to women. Usually in that 50-year range it begins to happen. What exactly. causes menopause? What, what is it exactly? Yeah. Well, menopause is a natural progression and essentially what's happening is as a woman um, is initially born, she's born with lots of eggs and they all produce hormones and over time that same batch of eggs reduces. So the hormone levels reduce over time. And approximately the age of 50 to 51, a woman's menstrual cycle will actually stop. So okay. menopause is defined as the um, as the elimination of a menstrual period for a year time period. Okay, one full year. One full and year. When yep. do people start? I asked her this off camera <laughs> before, <laughs> so I'll just pretend I'm asking you for the first sure, time. Yeah. When do people start with? perimenopause because this is yes. a, a, a a situation on its own right exactly it's a, it's a, a symptom that's a great question I was thinking about what you asked as well how do you know the difference between PMS and perimenopause mm -hmm. yeah because the symptoms are similar exactly with PMS your cycles are still fairly regular and you have lots of symptoms associated with your cycle with perimenopause your menses starts to really fluctuate like fluctuate how much you might miss a period your periods might be a long period of time in between or they might be be really short. You know, you've really got variations in how often your period is actually occurring with the PMS symptoms. So it's kind of like a double whammy mm -hmm. time period. But it can occur up to 10 years before your menses actually stops. So there can be a fair big chunk of time where your period is, is fairly erratic. So, okay, what, what involved in all this, you mentioned earlier, is hormonal imbalance, like be it high estrogen, low estrogen, whatever the combination exactly. may be. Yes. Is there a way, um, because the hormonal imbalance seems to affect so much, is there a way to avoid hormonal imbalance? Yes. Definitely. So again, you want to look at the general uh, laws of basic well health. You want to go back to keeping exercise. Research again shows that exercise helps to support the liver, helps the liver clear itself. So okay. 30 minutes of cardiovascular in the morning, three times a week is really, really great. Get rid of the processed stuff, the caffeines, the sugars. Uh, sometimes dairy products are linked to aggravated PMS, so you want to do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, those are the real basic things that you so can do. So caffeine, sugar. Yeah. Well, that Two yeah. major ones. And it doesn't yeah. seem to come up over and yeah. over and over. Like yeah. really, you mentioned it a, a couple of times already. If people, if people sort of made that that general. The, um, exclusion right now. Exactly. Would people start to feel a difference? Absolutely. Yeah. Women would be amazed at how much of a difference it can make by just eliminating those two things. You know, how does a woman know that she's starting to go That's through that period? That's a great question. You know, the first thing we think about is hot flashes. They're mm -hmm. feeling really hot. Uh, they might be more susceptible to allergies. They might be more irritable. They might be depressed. A, a woman right. could, could be very positive her whole life and then all of a sudden start going through anxiety or depression depression or insomnia. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the most common symptoms associated with menopause. And people can contact you. If you want more yeah, information, sure. you can visit www.optihealth.ca or give 13829-7100. Don't go away. Please.